Hello and welcome. Back with another Summer at Marisol Bay. The aim of today is to finish the Wyatt route. So, let's get started. I fought every urge to take a nap when I got home from work last night, and instead passed out at a reasonable hour. I'm well rested and awake. Totally not because I literally can't stop thinking about my lunch date with Wyatt later. I want to learn more about him. I feel like... Oops. My mouse wheel is very sensitive. I feel like we're finally getting closer to each other. I think the two of us can be really good friends. Good friends. When lunchtime finally arrives, I'm ecstatic. I quickly change out of my costume and wait on the beach of Pirate Cove. The backgrounds in this game are really pretty. I wait until my lunch break is almost up and Wyatt still isn't here. In fact, he hasn't even popped in today like he usually does. It occurs to me that I don't have a way to contact him, and so I go to the lookout. Can't wait any longer. I need to eat so I can survive the rest of the day. When I get there, the person who greets me is a young man whose name tag reads Aiden. I'm expecting to see Brooke, but she's nowhere in sight. Uh, is Brooke in today? I was hoping to get her opinion on the situation because she must know Wyatt well. He's here all the time. She's on her lunch break. She'll be back in 15 minutes. Can I help you with something else? Yeah. Yeah. Can I get some chicken tenders? I make sure to tell Aiden I only have about 10 minutes left on my lunch break and he seats me at a table. My chicken tenders come out of the kitchen almost immediately, and I'm able to scarf them down quickly. When I finally get up to leave, I spot Brooke at the entrance of the lookout. Her arms are linked with wires, and the two of them seem to be giggling about something. My chest tightens. Getting stood up sucks, but getting stood up so that the person can go out with someone else? Stings even more. You dog, what's going on? I don't want either of them to see me and I try to duck out of sight as I shuffle towards the stairs, but it's no use. As I pass her by, Brooke grabs hold of my arm and stops me. I didn't know you were coming to the lookout for lunch today. I would have stayed. She claps her hands together and linking her arms with Wyatt, who looks like a deer in headlights. Or, I would have invited you out to eat with Wyatt and I at the hub. I'm embarrassed and I don't know what to say. So I just offer the pair a half smile. Oh, I wasn't planning on coming up here today, it just happened. Cairo? gift shop. He says it with a frown, though Wyatt can't lock eyes with me as he says it. What about the gift shop? I'd love to stay and chat, but I have to get back to work, so... I don't let either of them get a word in as I shove past them and bolt down the stairs. I want to cry, but... I remind myself, I'm at work. Wyatt left me waiting without even telling me he hadn't planned to meet me at all. Worse yet, it didn't even look like he had something more important to tend to, as Brooke made it seem like they were simply hanging out. The rest of the day is painfully slow. 
half expect Wyatt to come and apologize to me, but he doesn't. I don't see the man for the rest of the day, and the pit in my stomach never goes away. Stitched up. A few days have passed since the incident at Pirate's Cove, and I haven't seen or heard from Wyatt. It seems to be a trend with him, showing up for a bit and then disappearing. I've decided not to worry about it too much and focus on my job. Today I'm... wait... <laughs> yeah, fuck you! <laughs> Can I go eat lunch with this guy instead? Today I'm waiting for Liam at Madela Pearl to have lunch with him and Mrs. V. Liam has extended the invitation to me on this day in particular because of an event being run that he'd like to have me involved in. I don't know what I can offer to a fancy place like that, but I'm willing to hear him out. I look down at my wine-coloured tank top, black baseball shorts and sneakers with a frown. How fancy is this Madelapal? Are we talking polo shirts or tuxedos? Either way, I know for a fact that I'm not dressed for it. At least, Miss, Mrs. V and Liam have proper uniforms that they can wear around the resort. If I wear that pirate suit, I'm gonna have to talk like a pirate the whole time. It's fun, don't get me wrong, but I'd like to be Cairo for a bit. By following the signs, I reach the restaurant without a hitch. The only thing stopping me from entering is the deep grimace of a blonde woman who stands at the front of the restaurant that overlooks the sea. Behind her, I notice tables and chairs gathered around in the deck. But there's a fancy, but there's fancy silk tablecloths, red fabric napkins, and wine set on the tables. It's really quite beautiful. It is really <laughs> okay. Oh, she looks a lot more chill than I thought kind of scary, but also very chill. She doesn't look like you want to mess with her. The woman catches sight of me as I approach, and she looks at me from my scuffed canvas sneakers all the way up to the sweat around the neck of my tank top. Uh, from the deepened scowl on her face, I don't think she's too impressed with me. This has to be Carmella. Oh, she just frowned. <laughs> That's cool. Welcome to Della La Mer de la Pearl. Are oh, you yeah. lost? <laughs> Are you lost? <laughs> we only serve a certain clientele. She points to a stand-up sign that's in the sand. The text is small, so I have to squint to read at it. But it says... No headwear, exposed shoulders, and or legs allowed. For more casual dining, please visit the lookout. I take in a gulp of air and watch the woman carefully. Oh, um, L Liam told me to meet him here. My name is Cairo, I was just hired the other day. Camilla rolls her eyes. She shows no false politeness and instead tells me how she really feels. Oh, the pirate mascot. I'm not too thrilled to have you here, but if Liam says you're worth paying attention to, I suppose I trust him. Wow! For now. Wow. She motions for me to follow after her, clearly not wanting to even spare any more words on me, and walks me towards the back of the restaurant where Liam is sitting by himself. I guess Mrs. V won't be spending the hour with us after all. I wonder why he's calling me for today. Clearly Carmilla isn't interested in my help, so... I love him. Look at him with his suspenders. My mind wanders as I notice Liam reading through the menu in front of him. His fingers slide down the cursive black print. Okay, stop touching the menu. As I drag my feet towards him, Liam doesn't look up once. Is he so enraptured with the menu that he seriously doesn't hear me? That 
Jack gives me an idea. A terrible idea. But I'm going to do it anyway. I tiptoe towards Liam, and then I lean in towards his ear. I grab hold of his shoulder and whisper. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> he was really into that menu. <laughs> the man lets out a shriek and spills his glass of water onto the table. His shirt and the menu he was reading so intently. Uh, what the hell? <laughs> I can't help but chuckle at his downturn eyes. Despite his angry eyes, I notice a smile quickly forming on his face. He runs his fingers through his hair and I can only laugh. Glad you think that's funny. I'm sorry, I didn't think you'd get all wet. Here, let me help you. I walk over to the other side of the table and grab one of the napkins. I hold it out to Liam who only shakes his head. Nope, you're cleaning it up, smart guy. I wipe the liquid off the table while Liam pats himself down. Then the two of us did I thought he was... I thought he was going to have to clean him up too. I was like, okay, that's a bit forward. Didn't expect that from Liam. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't get mad at me for scaring him. I usually take everything Liam says seriously because... For the little time I've known the guy, he's been very forthcoming with me. Though, I really want to see if there's another side to this man. He can't be so serious all the time, can he? There must be something more to him. I watch as Liam recognize, as reorganizes his papers. I'm hoping that the next time we meet is to do something more fun, where we can both relax and get to know each other. Liam is one of my only friends here. But I'm afraid that if I step away from Marisol Bay, there won't be anything left for the two of us. Just like in school, you spend every day with your class and then when graduation comes, everyone goes to their new schools and forgets about you. You find out that without that institution in front of you, you really have nothing in common. Well, okay. Getting hit with some hard jokes there. Cairo. I invited you here because... His voice trails off and he frowns. Cairo? What's wrong? Nothing? I love that the eyebrow changes. Like, they blink as well, but the, eye the eyebrow change is a really cool detail. I shake my head. Hoping my long hair covers my face. I don't like him scrutinizing me like this. No, there's something up. You can't just be all energetic and scare me only to have that blank look in your eyes minutes later. What happened? I was just thinking, can we be friends outside of work or is this it? <laughs> Liam has stunned to silence and I don't blame him. I shouldn't have said that out loud. I've only made it weird for the both of us. Never mind. Forget I said anything. I look away. My eyes dart from the white staff to the elegant decorations. Anything to avoid Liam's case. No, wait. You caught me off guard. It doesn't mean I don't want to talk about it. Friendships are much more than situational occurrences. If we cannot connect outside of work, we are not friends. Acquaintances, yes, but not friends. Liam is like... Liam is right. If work ends and our relationship is suddenly gone, it means that we haven't put in the effort to keep a potential friendship afloat. But that's what I'm scared of. What if we just drift away from each other because we can't maintain a friendship? Where has this come with... Like, where has this come from with, with Liam all of a sudden? Like, we, we haven't had much to do with him this route, like, from this playthrough so far. All of a sudden, we're like, we're such good friends. I don't know, it seems a little unexpected. I didn't, yeah. 
Let's just see where this goes, though. What brought all this? What brought all of this on, Cairo? <laughs> it feels like we've switched routes. <laughs> I want to be your friend. Outside of Marisol Bay, I want to hang out, laugh, and joke together. We can certainly do that. I hope you come to dinner at my place this weekend after our shift. We won't talk about anything work-related at all. Yeah. Yeah, sounds fun. Good. Now, he slides his papers in front of me. I promise no work talk this weekend, but since we're here, I have a proposition for you. An upgrade, if you will. I take a glance down at the papers Liam has manoeuvred in front of me. They're flyers for an event held at Madela Pearl. What's all this? There's an event being held here in a few weeks, and I'm working with Carmilla to run it. We'll be celebrating our most esteemed guests, those with black cards. Ah, the black card. I'm not sure what it is, but I do recall that mother angrily tossing it in White's face a few days ago. Does owning a black card make you, like, a season pass holder or something? This is not an amusement park, Kairi. It's a resort. The black card allows unlimited... Entry to all activities, food, and gift services. It sounds like an amusement park. <laughs> Only the wealthiest of the guests have it. So, we're celebrating the fact that they're giving the resort an absurd amount of money. I mean, the lady who I ran into last week with Wyatt just threw it in our faces. Oh, high-paying guests do act a little entitled, but... That comes with any luxury experience. You need to suck it up and put on a smile. Do you know how many times I've had to comp a room or a meal because an angry person comes shouting at me about how the staff is rude and they didn't pay big money to have to wait for things? Most of these claims are illegitimate. Our staff is usually in the right, but our staff aren't the one keeping the resorts funded. It's a toss up. I know in my heart that Liam is right in terms of keeping a business flourishing. Appease your rich guests and they'll continue to give you money. That also doesn't mean you should let your staff suffer for it. They're the ones working hard every day to keep the business afloat. Without them, who is going to entertain, serve and tend to the need of the guests? I suppose so. What will you have me doing at this event? I point down at my less than satisfactory outfit and frown. Not exactly known at the resort for my luxurious accomplishments, I'm a mascot. No, I was wrong, wrong for calling you that when we, when we met. You're not a mascot, you're an entertainer. Hearing Liam admit that makes my heart swell with joy. Having someone appreciate my talent and craft is all I've ever really pushed for in my life. I don't really think Liam quite understands how much that means to me, but I am grateful for his words. Well then, how can I entertain you? Liam begins to chuckle. There's a twinkle in his eye. You can entertain the guests by being the MC. It's a business venture of sorts. Masked as a big thank you to our exclusive guests. You'll simply be entertaining the guests and urging them to donate more money to help Marisol Bay grow. I play a pirate on the beach. You really think I can do something like get people to open their wallets? That's a long shot. It's all acting, Cairo. You don't need to believe in what you're selling. It helps, but it's not necessary. You simply need to play a part. I believe you can do it. So if you're willing to help, I'll clear it with Amelia. As Liam and I talk, the time begins to slip away. I've spent too much time here and I need to head back to my station. Think about it and let me know, all right? No hard feelings if you don't want to, but you'd be doing me a huge favor. If this event is a success, it'll prove to the owner that I'm a capable worker. Perhaps my future here, perhaps my future is here and not as a lawyer in some stuffy firm. I'll think about it for sure. Liam is trusting me with his future and that's not something I'm going to take lightly at all. 
I need to make sure that this is something I really want to do before accepting it. As I head back to the Riptide to change, I feel an emptiness settling inside my gut. On one hand, I'm glad that things are going so well with Liam and I, but my relationship with Wyatt seems to be faltering. Every time it seems like we're making progress, Wyatt and I take a step back. Unlike with Liam, there are doubts in my mind that once this summer is over, I'll never hear from Wyatt again. As eccentric as Wyatt is, I enjoy spending time with him. Having his smiling face at Pirate's Cove is one of the highlights of my day. Not to mention that the other day he stood up for me when a patron was berating me. The voice of doubt rears its ugly head and reminds me that if Wyatt does actually care, he's doing a terrible job of showing it. Why does he keep pushing me away? I let these thoughts run through my head as the rest of the day passes by slowly. In the locker room, as I'm changing to head out of the resort for the evening, Brooke enters. She, took a she tosses her bag onto one of the benches with a sigh and collapses to the floor dramatically. I gather my stuff from my locker, shut the door, and secure the lock. Rough day. She shakes her head, but blows some of her hair out of her face. Oh. I heard some exciting, terrifying news, and I'm totally stressing out. Breathe before you tell me. She inhales and then exhales, standing up and straightening out her outfit. Amelia is trusting me to run an event of my choosing at the lookout in a few weeks. It's a chance for me to show her and the big boss man that our little family-friendly side at the resort has a lot of potential. It's a big deal. No kidding. This is something you've wanted, right? Yes. The only thing is that Amelia is giving me full reign over it. Because I'm in charge of the lookout this summer, I don't know what to do. All I'm positive about is that I want you on my team. I mean, if you'll lend me your talents. Yeah. Yeah, of course. If I'm able to, I certainly will. You know, Liam asked me to help with an event as well. Her eyes widen for a moment, and she lets out a huge gasp. Please don't tell me that it's going to happen in a few weeks as well. To my understanding, it is, but... Perhaps they're on different days? I doubt it. Remember how I told you there's like this unofficial battle between the recreation side of the resort and the luxury side? See? It's a real thing! We're actually battling it out! Are you really? Yeah! Think about it, Kairo! Maybe the big boss man is trying to see which side will run the event better. If that's the case, you're going to need to pick your allegiance. I waved off her heated concerns with my right hand. This is all speculation. Unless there's proof that the owner is actually going to pick one side to expand over the other based on a silly event, I'm not believing it. Hey, I'm sure that's not the case at all. Let's get going before we hit traffic on the way out. Brooke is reluctant, but she nods and follows me to sign out. In the small chance that she's correct and both events are held on the same day, I have to choose which one I'm going to help run. I can't be in both places at the same time. <laughs> oh, oh, what? Whose future do we want to help succeed? Brooks or Liam's? Oh, I thought I was going to give me an option there. Oh, <laughs> stress. The next day, and the day after that, go by almost uneventfully. Today, Amelia has called for all staff members to gather in the cafeteria before the workday starts. Technically, today is my... Technically, today is my day off, but Amelia insisted we all show up for this very important meeting regardless. 
As I waltz in, Amelia and I make eye contact. She smiles, though I can see her pen tapping impatiently against her signature wooden clipboard. Cairo. Cairo. Thank you so much for coming in on your day off. Find a seat and we'll begin shortly. I scan the room and see a few spots available. One seat is in the middle by... By... Oh, or everyone. One seat is in the middle by Brooke, who is waving at me to come join her. The other is all the way in the front with Mrs. V, Liam and Camilla. Finally, there's a seat in the back next to some staff members I've never met before. <laughs> all by myself. Uh, Brooke, Mrs. <laughs> Liam and Mrs. B, by myself. Let's sit next to Brooke. I take a seat by Brooke, who looks like she's been waiting for me to come in. It's about time. I had to send off so many people who wanted to sit in this beautiful chair right next to me. I'm sorry for putting that kind of stress on you. How can I ever thank you? I wink at her as she leans back in her chair with her arms crossed over her chest with a small pout. Help me with my event. Hey, I said I could if I would. I said I would if I could, right? Brooke nods and straightens herself out. Right! <laughs> right! You did. But a little extra reminder never hurt anyone. As I'm about to respond to her, Amelia begins to speak. She seems a little more frazzled than usual. When I look over to Brooke the girl and he shrugs, she has no clue either. Welcome. Thank you all for joining me today. Some of you may have heard already that there will be two events being held at the resort in a few weeks. Welcome. As the end of the summer nears. One will be held at Mad La Pearl and the other will be run at the Lookout. Both events will be run simultaneously to accommodate all kinds of guests. If people do not feel like dressing up and heading to a fancy dining experience, they can have some fun at the Lookout. As most of you are returning staff, you know how much we prioritise the end of summer activity for guests and staff alike. Those, these two events are at our rest, wait, these two events at our restaurants will be the kickoff to the end of our time together. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Sometimes my brain just stops processing words. <laughs> Is my summer here at Marisol Bay really almost over? It's a sad thought been enjoying myself. After the two events, there will be an end of summer gathering and then we will all officially say goodbye to the seasonal staff members. That's still a month away, but so you were all prepared, this is how the rest of the summer will go. The events at Modella Pearl and The Lookout are being hosted by Liam and Brooke respectively. If they need help, and you want to assist, I encourage you to do so. Try to engage the guests as much as possible. A knot grows in my stomach. I wanted to help both Brooke and Liam, but it seems like I'll have to make a choice between the two of them after all. Amelia drones on and on about other th things like people taking too long on lunch breaks, permanent all year round musicians and lateness. When she's done speaking, I stand up to leave. Then something, or rather someone, crosses my mind. Why? I should ask Brooke about where he's been. She's always talking to him at the lookout, and the last time I saw them together, they looked like they were having a good time. I rush to get to Brooke before she heads off to start her shift for the day. Brooke! What's up? It's about what? I haven't seen him around in a little bit. Brooke smirks and leads to Morsby with a devious look in her eye. Huh? Are you worried about him? Do you miss him? Uh, something along those two lines, yes, but... I'm worried he doesn't want to see me anymore since he hasn't been at Pirate Cove like, recently. This is about him hanging out with me instead of at the gift shop with you, isn't it? 
Wyatt didn't tell me he had plans with you and he doesn't often forget about them. So I'm not sure what his deal is. Though, he's facing a lot of stress from his family right now so maybe that's affecting him? I don't know for certain. You'll just have to ask him. That's the problem. I don't know how to get in touch with him if he doesn't show up at Pirate's Cove. Don't worry! <laughs> don't worry! That's not a problem at all. I'm going to text you his number. Call him and sort it all out. I'm sure he's not avoiding you on purpose. Sorry I can't stay and chat longer. I have to head to the lookout and prep for our first guest of the day. Thank you. No worries. Thanks, Brooke. She throws up a peace sign and heads out. There's nothing else left to do here. I follow and make my way to the hub. I take a seat on one of the benches. There's people mulling about the resort, despite how early it is. I will admit, working at the resort doesn't give me the time or energy to appreciate Marisol Bay fully. I wonder what it'd be like to stay here with my parents and my sister. I believe Wyatt is staying at the resort all by himself. I never see him visiting the beach with a partner or a friend or a family member. Instead, he's made friends with the staff. Is he all alone by choice? Or is it because of something else? I hold my phone in my hands and look down at the screen. Brooke has sent me Wyatt's number and I've added it to my contact list. I'm worried about him. I want to call him and let him know that I've missed seeing him. I wrestle with my thoughts and try to convince myself that it's way too early in the morning to call him. Unfortunately, I've seen him at Pirate's Cove bright and early, so I know it's highly likely that he's awake. I have no more excuses. Then the phone dials for a few moments and then I hear White's voice on the other end. Is he gonna hang up? Hello? Hi. Hi. Hi, Uh, Maya, it's me, Harry. I hope you don't mind, but Brooke gave me your number. The captain is calling. To what do I owe the pleasure? I can just picture the signature smack of his right now. I haven't seen you at Pirate's Cove in a while. Wanted to know if you were alive. Oh. I am indeed alive. Thanks for checking up on me. Is that all? I mean, I guess. I didn't plan this far ahead. <laughs> I hear Wyatt laugh and my nerves melt away. If you're calling me, it must mean you're not at work. Are you free? I'd like to explain to you why I've been a little distant. Are you going to stand me up again? I didn't mean to. I was really looking forward to spending some time with you as Caro and not Captain Bailey. I hesitate for a moment, but Wyatt needs to know how he made me feel. It hurt. Sorry. <laughs> Don't sound very sorry. Sorry. <laughs> the tone of his voice is somber. But I don't quite know if I believe him yet. He sounded so cheerful. I don't like to talk... I'd like to talk about this in person, if it's possible. Can we meet up? I'm at Marisol Bay right now. I had a meeting this morning and I have no plans for the rest of the day. Oh, great. We can go to the dining aquarium. It'll be fun. I did want to visit the cocktail ocean at least once before the summer ends. So even if White doesn't show up, I'll have something to do. Let's do it. Great. I'll see you in about half an hour then. See you then. We say our goodbyes and hang up. I feel more nervous than before I made the call. I'm seeing White again and I can't imagine what he's going to say. But what kind of Hawaiian shirt will he have? i not gonna lie, I really wanted that pineapple one. Like, I would wear that. That's pretty stylish. <laughs> it's not, but I just... <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it doesn't take long for Wyatt to get there. In fact, he's at our meeting spot before I even make my trek there. 
Oi, ocean today. Ocean for the aquarium. So much for half an hour. It looks like he's already been at the resort. When Wyatt looks up, the two of us lock eyes and my heartbeat speeds up. Captain. Captain Kai. He waves his arm wildly, laughing like a school child during recess. I can't help but smile back at him. His energy is contagious. I just want to scruff his hair up. He's just... Look at how curly he is. I drive up to him. Don't fall. Hey, nice shirt. Is that the new one from the gift shop? <laughs> Ouch. I guess I deserve that one. I know. I know I apologize on the phone already, but... I am sorry. I was hoping to wow you with lunch before we got into this conversation. He places a hand behind his neck. I had a whole speech planned and everything about this place. You know why I invited you here specifically, right? This is where we first met. Oh, this is where we first met. Yeah, he's right. This is where White first bumped into me. Before I even started working at Marisol Bay officially. He's got that same wild hair and calming look in his eyes. Except this time, when I look at him, I don't see a minor inconvenience in my day. I see a fun and smooth-talking guy who I want to at least be able to call my friend. I don't know too much about Wyatt, but I do know that I'm happy when he's around. He lights up my day at Pirate's Cove with that silly smile of his and those terrible dad jokes. I know we would have still met even if we didn't bump into each other that day, but then I'd miss out on all those times, getting to make you flustered by trying to make it up to you. No. I thought we were past that. I don't want any fancy dinners. The two of us are smiling at each other. Just this once. Let me treat you to a good lunch. Then, we'll be all squared up for me walking into you. Seriously? Yes. Yes, seriously. What I have to tell you should be said over a nice meal. So you'll be distracted by the delicious food. Oh god. What does he need to tell me? I feel my hands growing sweaty. Ugh, stress sweat. Oh no. <laughs> Kidding. I get lonely eating all by myself every day, so just indulge me for one afternoon. I exhaled sharply. He made it sound like he was coming clean about some huge secret or something. I'm relieved. Alright. He offers me his arm and I link mine with his. Though the walk to the cocktail ocean is short, Wyatt fills a silence with a list of his favourite foods to eat at the restaurant. I'm happy to finally get a chance to go there. I just hope that Wyatt doesn't disappear on me. Ooh. That's pretty. Look at that background. I don't know if we did the backgrounds for this game. But they're pretty. And Wyatt and I are seated in the most beautiful arrangement I've seen at any summer resort. A vast aquarium tank stretches over and around the dining area. I can see the fish swim around us from all angles. All while I get to eat what Wyatt claims is the second best food at Marisol Bay. Please tell me they don't serve fish here. Don't worry, the fishies won't be watching us eat their brethren. I glance over the menu. There were quite a few options, but I settle on something simple. A chicken sandwich and sweet potato fries. Wyatt gets a hummus and crust steak with broccoli on the side. Broccoli. I remember when I first bumped into you. You were fascinated by this place. You could see it in your eyes. It reminds me of all the th things I used to do with my family when I was younger. We used to go to aquariums, zoos, theme parks, resorts. 
My voice trails off as I watch an angelfish swim to the left of us leisurely. Then I grew up and went to college. So I acting and I forgot about everything else. Even spending time with my family. It's not that we don't have a good relationship or anything, but things are just normal. No more vacations just for the heck of it. I see my parents when I go home, but mm, that's about all there is to it. As I finish my thought, the waiter places our food in front of us. It smells absolutely delicious. I assume that Wyatt is going to dig in, but he doesn't even pick up his fork. He's still looking directly at me. This time, with a slight frown. <sighs> I only really had one adventure growing up. Marisol Bay. My younger brother and I spent so much time here. We'd play on the sand, building sandcastles for hours. We'd run around the lobby while Mrs. V yelled at us not... Not to mess up the waxed floors. No way! Didn't she say that she's been around since it opened or something like that? No way. Mrs. V has been around all that time? It's hard to imagine her yelling at anyone, especially a young Wyatt. Now that I think about it, it's probably why Wyatt walks around so casually and all the staff know him. He's been visiting this place since he was a child. Oh yes. She's been working here before I even got here too. She could tell you stories of what she's seen. As he talks about his memories, Wyatt smiles. It feels different from his usual sly grin though. There's something almost melancholic about it. Marisol Bay isn't a bad place to have an adventure. No, I suppose not. There are still some traces of adventure left to be had. If not for Pirate's Cove, I have cut my stay here short. Murder the Pearl and all that other upscale nonsense takes the fun out of everything. You've got to dress a certain way, act a certain way, have a certain amount of money. It's ridiculous. But when I go to the lookout, I get a good meal, a beautiful view, the sound of families having fun all around me. It's so nice. Then I can go to the beach and talk to my favourite pirate captain and be his first matey for a little bit. It's a great time, kind of like I'm a kid all over again. Hearing Wyatt say these things, I can't help but agree with him. There's not a problem with upscale's amenities, but they're more targeted to a specific demographic of people. Whereas the experience I'm creating as Captain Bailey can be more widely enjoyed. Oh, <laughs> I click. Oh, history. <laughs> thank you. So, thank you for making my summer a really good one, Caro. I know I joke a lot, but I really do appreciate all the time I've spent with you. I feel the same way about him. My summer working at Marisol Bay wouldn't have been as enjoyable without him popping up and making me laugh every morning. This is the part where you tell me to stop rambling. He's blushing. I thought about it, but I like hearing you talk. Mm. <laughs> that, mm, that kills me. <laughs> oh, do you now? He raises his left brow in exaggerated fashion and leans forward with a wink. I roll my eyes and pick up a french fry. And then you're fine with me talking for a little longer? I want to explain why I've been gone. As he says this, I swear I see him taking a large breath of air. I love every minute I spend at Marisol Bay, but not everything can be an adventure. I gotta be a little selfless sometimes. <sighs> when my parents got divorced, my younger brother moved in with my dad, and my mother decided she didn't need help and took on a life of a single mother. She worked extremely hard to give me what I have and I want to repay that back. My mother's birthday is coming up and I have been planning a top secret scavenger hunt for her. She'll 
go through a bunch of memories we've had together and end right here at Marisol Bay. It's a bit of work to handle on my own, so Brooke has been helping me out with the whole thing. Wow, that's really thoughtful of you. It's very clear that White prioritizes time spent with family and the memories he makes with the people he cares about. Mm. And I'm hearing there's this big event that Brooke is planning at the lookout and I was going to see if perhaps we can include my tribute to my mother in it. Brooke tells me that you're conflicted about helping out because Liam asked you first. It's understandable. The man probably has a five-part plan with every single step accounted for. That does sound like something Liam would do. Wyatt nods and finally begins to cut his steak, which is probably cold by now. I don't wish ill on anyone's dreams. Especially Liam, because I know this resort means the world to him. I am, however, trying to recruit you to mine and Brooke's cause. If our event is a success, it will show the resort owner that Marisol Bay flourishes as a family business. When you're Captain Bailey, you create so many amazing memories for people. It's not about the money or the promotions. Brooke and I want to keep the place we visited as kids a fun and amazing experience just like we had. If you choose to help Liam with his dreams, there's no harm. If Liam asks you to help, he must truly believe in your talent. For as long as I've known him, I've never heard him ask for assistance from anyone. Oh, don't say that. Brooke and I will still fight for our dream and there won't be any hard feelings. As he finishes his statement, Wyatt begins to eat his steak ravenously, as if he'd never eaten before in his life. So yummy. He speaks like a serious conversation has never happened at all. I owe him the courtesy of thinking long and hard about this decision. Because not, now not only Brooke and Liam's dreams are on my shoulders, but Wyatt's as well. I can't let anyone down. The two of us barely get in any more words as we eat our lunch. When it's time to pay, White reaches over the check with a wry grin, and I, but I shake my head fervently. No way, I'm paying for my own meal. But I invited you out, so it's only fair. No, no. That only applies if this is a date. Well, who says it's not a date? The two of us stare at each other. White smirks at me. Almost like a challenge. Stop teasing me. <laughs> oh, now he's, he's blushing. White winks at me. He takes a black card from his wallet and holds it up. Wait, you have one of those? Yes. Hmm. Are you shocked? Every single person I've met that has one of those is a snob. Are you saying I'm a snob? No. <laughs> no, of course not. White nods his head the grin never leaving his face. This is the most cost-effective solution for me being here every day, don't you think? I get most meals comped for a monthly fee. Considering how much you eat at the lookout, it pays for itself. Exactly. He places his black card into the receipt holder and places it onto the table with his hand over the leather. Thank you. Thank you for a fun time out, Cairo. Did you just... I toss my arms over my chest and glare at the man. Hey! You swindled me! Remove your hand, now, and let me pay for my meal. I have a better idea. I highly doubt that. Next time we go out, you can pick up the tab. They're trying to call me you can't... <laughs> You're trying to con me into going out with you again. Well... Is it working? Yeah. Actually, yeah. I don't quite want to leave yet. I wonder if White would like to hang out with me some more. If you're not busy, we can go to the aquarium and walk around. My trade on tickets. A 
I'm never too busy for the captain. When the waiter comes back, White hands the main man the receipt holder and we wait for him to come back with the black card. Then the two of us head towards the aquarium. When we enter the aquarium, oh, this is so pretty. I love aquariums and ocean related things, even though I'm kind of terrified of the ocean. <laughs> Australian, he doesn't like water. <laughs> Got jokes. <laughs> I'm Australian. When we enter the aquarium, I'm reminded of my childhood. My little sister and I would roam the halls of our local aquarium together, pointing out the fish and trying to keep track of them as we gave each other as we gave each one a name. I don't visit this place as often as I should. Wyatt stops by one of the large tanks and places his hand on the glass. I stand beside him and watch the fish swim by so freely. I can't look away. It's so captivating. I can't look away. A yellow and blue fish swim by our faces and Wyatt leans even closer to the tank. His eyes practically pushed against the glass. I guess I never spent enough time admiring the fish. They're beautiful. I tend to avoid this place because the staff who work in here are kind of stuffy. They'll answer any questions I have, but they're too serious. I can't have any fun with them. It's sort of their job. Can you really fault them? No, but... He pulls away from the glass and turns to me. <sighs> These days I usually come to the resort on my own. My mother has her own life now and... I'm not on the best of terms with my brother or father. I like to talk to the staff and make friends if I can, otherwise I get a little lonely. What about friends outside of here? I'm sure you have some. Chitons are sure. I don't know if you noticed this, Cairo, but I'm not an easy person to get to know. No, but I think it's worth the effort. You don't have to lie to me. I know I'm totally lame. But for what it's worth, when I go to Pirate's Cove, I'm not really trying to visit the Riptide. I'm stopping by to see you. My heart lurches as he finishes his statement. I don't think he's lame for admitting any of that to me. I admire him for his honesty and for opening up. Even more so, I'm honoured that I can lighten up his day even just a little bit. You're right. That's totally lame. Uh, hey! <laughs> I begin to laugh at his bemused expression. I don't think Captain Bailey would be as fun without you. You keep me on my toes. What I told you earlier about the resort helping create memories for people. He steps closer to me and takes one of my hands in his. My breath gets caught in my throat and I lock eyes with him, not willing to look away for even a second. It's not only family and kids that you're creating experience for. Befriending you and Brooke has made this an amazing summer. I'm having the most fun I've had here in a while because I'm not alone. Thank you. Thank you, Cairo. I'm glad that you decided to give me a chance. Before I can say anything, Wyatt drags me down the hall towards another tank. He doesn't let go of my hand, but has changed the topic to the fish in the aquarium. Yeah, I thought they were gonna kiss! Damn it! Kiss in the aquarium! That would be so pretty! I go along with it, but I've taken note of his words and I cherish them. For Wyatt, this resort is a huge part of his life. Marisol Bay holds not only his memories, but his friends as well. It's because of the resort that he doesn't feel so lonely. I want to keep creating that kind of experience for everyone I meet here. As I walk around with Wyatt, I feel at ease. I'm learning more about him and it feels really good. I hope that Wyatt will continue to open up to me. The weekend rolls by rather quickly 
and I'm actually pretty happy about it. Unfortunately, I don't have any days off on the weekends, because those are the busiest days of the season. But... <laughs> yeah. But I do have something else to look forward to. Last week after telling Liam that I wanted to be friends outside of work, he invited me to his... He invited me to dinner at his place after our shift. This will be a good time to get to know Liam without the golden nameplate and the stuffy air about him. The drive to his place is a little long. He lives on the outskirts of the central city. It's a nice area, which doesn't shock me at all. It'd be strange to see him living in a different setting. After sending Liam a text asking if I can park in his driveway, I close my car door and knock on the door to his house. And that was part three of Summer at Marisol Bay. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope to see you back for the next part where we continue the Wyatt route. And we will pick up where we left off with visiting Liam. Very curious is where that will go. But I'm not really because I've already recorded that video. This video was split in split in two. <laughs> so I'll see you for the next one. Bye!